vibrato. It comes from vibration. Uh, vibrations are all around us. They're in the earth. They are in the air. They're in our bodies. Our bodies are vibrating. I can feel it in my hands right now. And when we draw the bow across the string, you can see very closely. The G string is vibrating. And I can actually feel that vibration in my neck. I can feel it in my hand. I can feel it um, in my other hand. I can feel it throughout my, 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 my uh, chest area. So the vibrations are all around me. And I can feel it in my thumb as it rests on the violin. I can feel it on the other side of my hand, but at that little ledge. When I put the finger down, I can actually feel it in the fingertips. So I connect the vibration all the way around my body now. Fingertip, neck, right hand, left hand, all over. Now, what we want to do with vibrato is make the sound um, more enhanced. So make a round sound rounder, make it make it vibrate. So that's what we're gonna do today. Now, the first exercise I like to do, my, and my vibrato kind of morphed, as I said, it went from an arm vibrato because a person that I used to study with back when I was in seventh grade, he was actually, um, his teacher was Leopold Auer. So, um, and, and Leopold Auer was the teacher of Yasha Heifetz, very famous um, violinist. And, um, and Leopold Auer, I mean, the, all the back then it was like an arm vibrato and I was taught with a, to keep my arm like a bar and all sorts of things. But then bit by bit, I went to another teacher, got a little more relaxed, it opened up and opened up to where I have it now. And this is how I teach vibrato. Um, so I start by not having the violin. Take your left hand. Um, that you're going the hand that you're going to be vibrating with on the neck and I just shake it now, as you can see I'm shaking my forearm this is the first exercise I call it the mamma mia <laughs> just because mamma mia that's what I don't know that's what I call so and my wrist is loose my forearm shaking it's a little different than some of the other vibrato exercises that I've heard of, but it kind of encompasses everything and it's loose. My knuckles are also soft. And, and that leads me to the next exercise. It's a very slight little knuckle flex. And really, you're gonna be flexing the knuckles. Um, all the fingers should be loose and flexible, but the knuckle flex, and you put your, finger in between the thumb and then just let it roll probably is more beneficial to your first and second finger third finger I don't really when I'm actually vibrating I don't really use this mechanism my fourth finger I definitely do not but nonetheless without the violin this is a good thing to be doing getting your wrist loose and having it react off of the movement of your forearm and then have the violin in rest position, a, a good exercise, just like this, neck glide. And see, and I talked about holding the violin before, how we just rest it, you cradle it in the neck. You don't wanna ever get off the neck like that. I've, heard, I've, I've seen people um, demonstrate where you have to jump off the neck. I would not advise that. Just rest it right there on that little ledge, put the thumb right there, and it's loose. It's, we're gliding up and down the neck. It's, you're cradling it. And then <clears throat> this is what I refer to as like the hang simulator. 
with each finger, you, you just kind of holding it here and just hang it. And you can use a very um, thick finger. It doesn't have to be too upright. I know I've heard um, descriptions of make sure your fingers are upright, like tabletop. I actually like keeping a little bit more flesh on the string. And then you can get that nice kind of thick sound. So then after the hang simulator, we can go to our um, violin and bow. Now, now this is where, okay, so we have the violin, we're using the bow and they really don't work well without the, uh, each other. Obviously you can just do pizzicato if you don't. It still vibrates. You can vibrate with the vibrato, but the bow is really a key element of the violin. So now I put the finger on the string very gently. In and out of the string. So I really feel the tickle from the vibration up into the finger. And the, the, the thumb should be loose. And if anything, if you have a little leverage, it's coming from right there, N never from here, never drop down in there. Those are all dangerous no-nos for the um, holding of the violin. And then, <clears throat> so I've done that. I call that the in-out tickle, tick tickle. Because it really does, you feel it. Um, some people actually, when they do that exercise, they start laughing. So I don't, but <laughs> anyway, um, the neck glide. You can do the neck glide with your um, bow. <laughs> And this is actually comes into play like how similar successful shifting <clears throat> and vibrato are. You want to have a loose left hand. Those are shifting exercises, kind of like Gaylord Yost exercises. But <clears throat> it's also something that you want to do with your left hand. As you do the neck glide, it can get more and more narrow. And then eventually you stay on the neck. And there you are with the vibrato. But, there, but there's a lot to it. Um, developmentally takes a long time and a lot of patience. Um, another thing is when you vibrate, and uh, that same teacher that told me to vibrate as if I had a bar also had me do a kick. He said, no, let's not do the kick <clears throat> because the kick does something that actually distorts the pitch up. You don't want to vibrate above the pitch. I mean, like this. Because then you're going to start sounding like you're out of tune. You want your vibrato to help you sound in tune, if anything. Um, and that will be achieved by going from the note to back. Now this is where the flying saucer helps. Put your hand way up high in position. Slowly. Bring your hand back to neck. It could take anywhere from 10 seconds to a whole minute, depending on how slow you do it, but it's a backwards motion, a back motion. And then after the flying saucer comes something which is probably the most academic of exercises, but it's also a very good one that we all uh, should know. It's, I refer to it as the measured roll, where you start at the note, <laughs> Go 
Okay, so that's what I do. I do two per beat, three per beat, four per beat, and six per beat. And I go from the note back. Then I end with six. And if you do that on each finger, you're going to gain some nice control without spazzing. And you do have to worry a little bit, be cautious about spazzing out because it's easy to do this. And then you're all of a sudden it's your tense. So we don't, we don't want to do that. Keep it measured and do it slow and be patient about developing your vibrato. Finally, we have the against the wall. I don't have a, a good wall here to demonstrate, but you could put a soft cloth against your scroll and just kind of lean into the wall and that can almost simulate hanging on the neck which is a really great way to feel when you're vibrating just to have your hand hanging now vibrato is not just for slow pieces kind of like what i just demonstrated with thais you can also use vibrato on fast notes as well um, let's say um, with, with uh, like a faster movement of Bach, like a, like a G. Now you may not have even noticed a real vibrato there. And people playing, you know, purists might say, oh no, you don't do vibrato on Bach. But a little bit can enhance the pitch. It can just make it sparkle. And you won't even notice it on fast notes. Like the difference between this and this. One, one, I really tried not to do vibrato. And then the other, I just let my finger kind of wobble as I put the finger down. Just let it be slightly unstable as you put it on the string and it'll create just enough vibrato. So there are a lot of uses for vibrato, primarily to enhance your pitch. And you really want to try to be able to have a change the width of your vibrato from narrow, pr probably when you're playing soft, to, to loud. And when you have a louder tone, you want a wider vibrato. That's usually the case, but you just should be able to do it on your own to vary the width, not necessarily vary the speed. I think width is more important. And then, oh, and also making it continuous from note to note. And the reason why I keep playing Thais, that's the, the kind of piece that uh, my teacher would give me whenever I needed to really work on my vibrato. So, um, so there you have it. I think between the two exercises without the violin called Mamma Mia, knuckle flex, two exercises in rest position, neck glide and the hang simulator, keeping a little bit more um, flesh on the string and then with the violin and the bow, you have the in and out. You have the neck glide, in and out, neck, flying saucer, and the measured roll, where we do two, three, four, and six, and against the wall, um, which is, uh, I guess that would be an optional one. But just be patient, do a little bit each day, and your vibrato will um, become very, um, enhancing for your violent life.